Namaste and welcome to Live, Love, Engage. I am so delighted to welcome a gentleman to our show today who I have uh, heard about for quite a few years. I've actually seen him on television performing and I'm really excited that he is here. So first off, I want to welcome Guy Bavli to our podcast. So hi, Gloria. How are you? I'm very well and really excited to let all of our listeners and viewers on YouTube know just who you are. Oh, thank you. As you can see from the back. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. You do. I love that. Yes. Awesome. So um, Guy has had a long and successful career filled with science-defying stunts and demonstrations. He's performed for Fortune 500 companies, Uh, primetime television networks and audiences around the world. And despite this, he claims to have no superpowers, although people would disagree when they watch him. Um, But actually, his skills lie in advanced applications of psychology, hypnosis, physiology, and mind magic, uh, which have been gained through years of intense study and practice. And in fact, I know that I have seen you do some of these things. If you go onto YouTube, folks, and Google, well, not Google him, but search on YouTube, you'll definitely find examples of that. Um, and I've seen you on shows like Penn and Teller and things like that. So what I thought we might start off with today was to ask you about, you know, what got you interested in this? When, when did you first uh, get interested in, in, in magic? And, and why, why did you, what was it about it that really appealed to you? Well, first of all, pleasure to be here, Gloria. Thank you very much for having me mm-hmm. and uh, having the interest, which is uh, <laughs> cool. Yeah, uh, that's what makes it interesting. You bring different people all the time, so it's mm-hmm. never the same. You don't know what to expect. That's right. Uh, I started when I was very young. I started when I was around five years old. I was very big uh, and obese when I was a child. I was mm-hmm. the biggest one in my school, and we had over a thousand kids in my school. Oh, wow. Uh, just to give you an example, when I was 11, I was uh, 237 pounds, which I remember about approximately 107 kilograms, because mm-hmm. I was born in Israel. So uh, in Israel, everything is in metrics. Mm-hmm. So I <laughs> Um, But I I know as as a child, as an obese child, it wasn't easy because people nudge and tick on you all the time. I was bullied, I was uh, uh, threatened all the time and and mainly made laugh on, you know, people come and flick my head, push me to the corner and, Mm -hmm. you know, call me names and it wasn't so much of a pleasure. Yeah. Um, One thing that I did have that uh, gained me other friends, but usually the undertakers, uh, was the, I I had a lot of sense of humor and I was kind of very playful guy. And I didn't care that I'm fat, that I can, I can make fun of myself in order to gain some laughs. And I was okay with that. What I wasn't okay that people make fun of me. So I... At that time, you know, I loved superheroes as a, as a child, you know, Superman, Spider-Man, Batman. I had a Batman doll that I played for years and years and years. <laughs> you know, today my kids buy something and they play for it with it half an hour and they put it in the drawer and then they want something else to excite them. <laughs> I, I played with it for months, years maybe, you know. <laughs> so um, I always wanted to be a superhero and I said, if I could do one special thing, maybe people will look at me the way that I am rather the way that uh, they see me, you know, from the inside right. rather from the outside. Yeah. Um, in, in Israel at that time, uh, Uri Geller, a very famous psychic entertainer, uh, became very famous in the beginning of the 70s and became worldwide famous. I didn't know him at that time, uh, but I looked up for him and I said, oh, that's very cool, but, you know, I would never be able to do that. Um, but I always wanted to be a superhero, but, you know, superheroes have a six pack and (laughs) I had a one pack. So I I, I knew that I could never be a superhero the way that I look like, you know, they're all so perfect. So I went with my mom to um, Tel Aviv to a bazaar and hold and behold, somebody sold magic. Never Mm. seen that before, Uh, Mm. you know, in a bazaar. I knew what magic was, but um, I convinced her to buy me one trick. We, you know, we didn't have much uh, resources at that time. So she agreed and, you know, we didn't buy the whole box, but just one. And I chose a mind reading trick, which is usually the last thing the kids will want because they want things to appear and disappear more visual. But I was very drawn to that. It was a color book, a a cube that somebody put a color, you close it, and then you know what color is inside. 
I took this trick and I start practicing and practicing and I showed it to family members and I went to school and I showed it to one friend and one friend called another friend and another friend. And all of a sudden people start gathering and say, can you show me this? Can you show me that? And I felt special. All of a sudden people looked at me and not in how I look like. So I convinced and worked very hard and did my chores and homeworks and everything. And I convinced to go, you know, a few weeks later and buy the entire box. Uh -huh. and, and then I practice even more and more. And, and, you know, as I said today, kids just buy it and throw it after that and let's mm -hmm. jump to something else. And I just really, really kept it and play with it. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another and I started buying more things and studying more things with the very little resources we had in Israel at that time. And I started doing shows when I was like eight years old. I had my first paid job in like birthday parties and stuff like that. Wow. Family oriented, very <laughs> minimal, you know. So yeah, I started okay. free, of course, but then they start paying. And I became um, more busy. I, I started working really at when I was eight, nine years old. And, and it was fun, you know. Uh, it was a way for me. I looked older also, but I didn't look 20. I probably looked like 12 or 13. <laughs> so um, that was my kickstart. Mm -hmm. And I always got drawn to, to, the, to the mind reading, the psychological elements. Mm -hmm. But psychological entertainment is non-visual art. So it's very hard to develop your own if you don't have the knowledge and if you don't have the personality. Right. So I started growing more on the magic side and practice everything in magic uh, from, you know, sleight of hands and manipulation and cards and illusions and everything. And um, this is what really built my knowledge as a performer until I, I uh, went into the army. In Israel, you do mandatory three years and I was lucky enough to be called to the uh, entertainment group there. Oh, good. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, I had a lot to give and they took it. So. Yeah. For three years, I really did shows in all aspects uh, of the, you know, of my service mm -hmm. in the kitchen, in tents, in, in $3,000 <laughs> theaters, you know, 3,000 wow. people theaters. Wonderful. So, you know, I, I had a lot of experience. And this is when I made the switch to psychological only rather mm -hmm. than magic. Mm -hmm. and, and I start studying all kinds of arts and modalities. And, mm -hmm. and I still study today. Every day is a study. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because if you don't, I think I would think you're going to lose your skills. So it's no, yeah, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, but every book you, you will read, every documentary you will see, take what you want, leave what you don't. It's enough if you get one thing, one mm -hmm. thing, even something that you know, and you forgot, it's mm -hmm. worth the price of the book. Mm -hmm. So or, or whatever you do. So yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So what um, now you I know you live in the United States now. So what brought you over here? I started to work uh, uh, abroad in the beginning of the 90s. Hmm. I finished my my army. Um, I went directly to work uh, for a TV show that I did a Syria with a candid camera that ah. involved magic and psychological things. It's uh, oh. what people will do for money. I was the one in the street using all kinds of things to to make them do crazy things <laughs> if you know I, I, you have to help me i'll pay you this much if you can just help me and come with me and do you know mm. whatever <laughs> so uh, and then um and then this is basically you know what what came out and about for me to start uh, traveling to abroad and i got called mm. to do a first show in austria mm. uh, in the beginning of the 90s mm -hmm. for a company and uh, it went very successful actually this client is still my client until today although he retires oh wow retired. i did my last project with him like two years ago and and i'm sure we will do something together again i did dozens of show for this client and mm. infomercials he's in the infomercial business mm. that were aired all over europe and uh, one thing led to another and i start doing more and more shows uh, abroad and because i had decent english you know, to an Israeli, <laughs> um, I went to do a show in China oh, in the wow. end of the, no, in about 96, mm -hmm. I think. And over there, I may, met an agent that uh, were very impressed, but you said, uh, you know, I'll call you one day. And a year <laughs> later, he calls me and he said, oh. you know, there is one show in Germany I want you to come. And it's the biggest sport event in Germany. We don't have money. So you have to fly here but it will worthwhile. 
So I remember I was thinking, well, I couldn't fly on my own dime and do this show <laughs> in order to enter a market. And I said, you know what? What the heck? Let's do it. <laughs> I flew there. I did the show. All the German celebrities were there. And the next thir- three years after, every weekend or second weekend, I flew from Israel to Germany to do shows. Oh, my gosh. With that uh, the biggest events you can imagine, you know, the Bunkers mm-hmm. Bowl, the, you know, Delta Airlines, the electricity, the, <laughs> the German rail stations, everything. <laughs> and um, then I, I was called to do a lecture at the Magic Castle in America. Oh. And... Um, they didn't know who, you know, what is it, but they start hearing about it. So for me to go and perform at the Magic Castle that all my yes. stars, you know, maybe Copperfield and Mark Wilson and all those big people. Mm-hmm. So I went there and all of a sudden, all, all the people, people I read in books and saw on TV are sitting in that room watching me teach them. <laughs> oh my. And uh, one thing led to another. They just uh, continue inviting me there to perform yearly. And mm-hmm. one time after the performance, somebody knocked on my door. It was the founder of the Magic Castle. And he said, I brought uh, somebody from Caesar's Palace to see you because they're looking. Oh my. And I was really, really nervous. I said, mm-hmm. you can't tell me this before the show. I mean, just, you know, what I'm going to do. Yeah. And um, that what started my Caesar's Palace contract. A year mm-hmm. later, I was in Caesar's Palace, you know. And uh, one thing led to another. And uh, in the 90s, uh, in the end of the 90s, um, we had a lot of situation in Israel with uh, uh, terror mm-hmm. and a lot of jobs got cancelled. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you know, they, they cancelled conferences and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And most of my work was in, in America, in Europe. So mm-hmm. I felt that I need to move instead of just flying 12 hours, 15 hours okay. every time. Yeah. So I made my paperwork and uh, moved to uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, in the beginning of the millennium and here well, i am wonderful to have a fellow floridian here because that's where i live too <laughs> so that's awesome yes, we're neighbors we should see yeah. each other in Publix. i know yeah um well you know and i love one thing that i've taken away from all of what you just shared with us i think is the fact that you were willing to take risks you know you you were you were and you said yes when opportunity showed up and i think that's really a good lesson for for people in general but definitely for for entrepreneurs in particular that to you know recognize these opportunities and to say yes to that um now i know when you, oh, give, you get when you give, you get. And sometimes, you know, you have the rational, you have the subconscious, and the subconscious usually is more right than the rational. Although we <laughs> all do, you know, we all live on emotional decisions, right. whether we buy, we go out, we do, we marry, it's all emotional. But sometimes the rational is taking over, and it's good. We need to protect ourselves. This, that's what protects us. But um, yeah, sometimes you need to take risks, and, and I took many risks in my life. Most of them worked out great. Some of them, okay, so I did it. Didn't work. It's fine. Learn from it. I'm smarter. I'm stronger. Absolutely. Yeah, that's for sure. Now, I'm sure this past year, a lot of people have had to learn uh, lots of different skills. In fact, even like, you know, using Zoom, for instance. Um, and as an entertainer, I mean, you're you're used to being out, going out in public and, and you know, and performing at uh, you know, different venues and things. So um, I'm sure it was a bit of a, you know, rude awakening to your business and your livelihood. So um, yeah, so how did you handle what, because I know you, you, you were able to pivot a little bit last year. So what, what did you do? First of all, it, you know, you start hearing about the pandemic, but that's far away. So mm-hmm. it's not here, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like a hurricane going to another, another state. Right. Um, I remember I have um, for the last six years, I, I do a lot of casinos, theaters, mm-hmm. and corporate events, mostly corporate, but I also headline in casinos and theaters. And um, when I, um, uh, I actually went to Vegas to shot to shoot the Penn and Teller show. And after Penn and Teller, I had to fly that night. I couldn't stay the next night to Aruba where I headline twice a week for the last six years. Oh, wow. So every week I fly to Aruba, Tuesdays and Wednesday, I have my own show there. People mm-hmm. are coming. It's great. And when I flew back, all of a sudden, you know, cancellation, 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 cancellation. 
the entire book is canceled mm -hmm. and also Aruba. Restrictions, you know, yeah. they close the island from hero to zero. Mm -hmm. And this is when the panic starts to be because in our work, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an entertainer, I'm a right. mentalist. Yep. I excite people, I motivate people. If I don't have people, who do I work with? Yeah. Uh, you know, Zoom is just, just somewhere you don't really know. So you start thinking, how do you pivot this so you can perform? You understand there is Zoom, you talk to friends. And I start talking to two friends in two different continents of the world, good friends. And we each of us start to think about how can we do virtual shows? What do we do? You can't really touch the person. I can't really tell you shuffle the cards or take yeah. this note or write something for me because you're there and I'm here. Right. And, and the entire magic community got panicked because there's, what do they do? There's no material. There's no genre as G virtual shows. It doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, there's television. So I took my television experience because I've done a lot of those. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand camera and media. And we start developing um, content that is good for us mm -hmm. that we can perform. And we start performing and testing it for people. And that was in April. I, I know the, the lockdown was in March 2020. Mm -hmm. That was April. And um, my first virtual show was actually in May. Hmm. that I started to do a virtual show. It was a free show. I invited people to test it out, to record right. it, to see how it works. Mm -hmm. And and the results were amazing because, hey, we are, in, I mean, how is it possible? Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, it, it even came to about, you know, I start marketing it because now it's a new product. People don't know about it. People don't know it's, right. but people have the need because you have companies who work remotely mm -hmm. and you have clients that are remotely. You cannot yeah. do the conferences. You cannot, you know, they sit at home 24 seven with their families and people mm. go nuts. Yes. <laughs> so I created the, the I mean, I, I started the idea of uh, not only having them join, you know, when I talk to mm -hmm. HR and companies, I say, let's, we are doing an event. You know, I don't want only them because I've seen a lot of people, kids running in and they push them aside. Mm -hmm. I'm in a meeting. I said, no, right. bring your right. family in. You're at home, bring them all in. It will be great for, the, for your camp, you know, come mm -hmm. in for the company. And I started doing a lot of shows for remote employees, you know, from Google to, 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 to uh, you know, insurance companies and the big uh -huh. banks and, you know, and yeah. small companies and US, U, UPS and, you know, yeah. whatever, you know, many, many companies. And then companies start to realize that they can connect with clients also. Mm. So I start doing customized things to help them brand themselves through a Zoom meeting to uh -huh. reach their clients. Uh, now, people used to do conversation like we do. Right. You know, watching somebody play on a guitar is great, but you can also watch it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> where is the interactive element here? Right. And this is where it hits. Mm -hmm. uh, so today I'm doing uh, a lot of conferences, virtual conferences. I do mm -hmm. uh, virtual parties, events, Sometimes it's just an hour that they want to have fun. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'm a part of a virtual lineup. Yeah. But what I do is breaking and really engaging the people because it's yeah. really, really different. Very cool. Um, is there any possibility you can share a little sample about what you do? Sure. sure. I know for First those of you listening, it might be hard. Let's, but... let's do something to warm up a little bit. Okay. I want All you to right. think of a number between one and a hundred. Okay. okay. You're there and I'm here. So yep, that's we never met physically before. We never that's talked. That's right. Before. We have not. And All I right. have my pen. I have my, my paper. Okay. Uh, I want okay. you to think of a number between one and a hundred. Let's say a part of your home number, phone number, ID, house number. But it okay. can also be okay. a, your part of your bank account number, credit card number. <laughs> number any other, no, no, no. <laughs> any other thing that is good for me. Okay. All right. I got a number. Good. So I'm going to write a number here. You have a number there. Whatever you do, please try not to, don't change your mind. Because if you change your mind, we have a lousy ending. All right? Okay. So um, look at me. I'm just going to scramble words to just look at you. And feel free. Don't, don't block yourself. 27, 19, 34, 3, and number 65. I'm not saying I said your number. But even if I did, please don't change your mind. I'm writing a number behind my back. So even I cannot see it. What <laughs> okay. is your number? 26. 26. Why did you say 26? 
Um, it's part of my old phone number, the, the home I grew up with. That so was that. Isn't that interesting? That is very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. I, I thought maybe 25 or 36, but uh, yeah, this this was my gut feeling. So uh, uh, applause to you. Yeah, well, applause to you. <laughs> Holy but crap. Let me explain how the psychological element works here. Um, uh, you, do you know what is Zener cards? Have no. you ever heard? No, I haven't. Kind of a card by uh, by Dr. Zenner that creates called a, a, a ESP cards. Mm. Each card represents something in our psych, in our psyche that other people are drawn for, and that helps assessing people. Uh, so let let me just show you. We you have a circle. A circle represents somebody that is very much complete and whole, very determined, knows where he's going. Then you have the plus. The plus is people who likes company, who always need people around them. They cannot work alone. They need somebody to hold their hand, but they work great in a group. Hmm. Then you have the wavy line, which is basically people who likes to be out in the nature. They like hmm. to go. They like to explore. They like to travel a lot. Hmm. You have the square that uh, just like it is. People that are very much square, they, they are in their own bubble, great employees, they will do what you need, but they won't have the, you know, the, the, the external ability to really lead as much. And then right. you have the star, which is uh, extrovert, people that are all about uh, uh, be out and be the center, me, 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 mm -hmm. me, me, not always like that. But, you know, right. I'm, I'm, I'm a combination of a few of them. If I mm -hmm. say. Yeah. So let me go here. Uh, and move you into a different window. You see my table here. I do. And I have duplicates of those here. So I'm gonna put the star here and the, the square uh, aligned with it, with the square, the wavy line aligned with this, with the, with the plus with the plus and the circle with the circle. Okay. Now, the most important thing is this for you, and this is the envelope. Yeah. So all I want you, we, we will deal with it later on. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. All I want you to remember is, you know, try to think which one of those are you more strongly connect to. If you had to choose one, but you will choose more than one. So what I'll do now, I will just turn them over here, one by one, and mm -hmm. I will take them and shuffle them so we both don't really know which one is what. Well, mainly you, because I will know. I will <laughs> That's true. Right? <laughs> so I uh, just shuffle this like this. Everything is good. So okay. all I want okay. you to do now is tell me um, which one will, uh, what is your favorite one? Which will be your favorite uh, uh, first uh, um, the, choice? The wavy so, line. Yes. The wavy line. Yeah. I will take uh, actually the first one. Which, which do you think will be the first choice for you? Uh, the, yeah, my first choice is the wavy line. The yeah. wavy line here. Do you want to change yeah. your mind? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Now, this is one out of five. So uh, okay. this is just my gut feeling, and then I will explain how. Okay. Uh, but I was absolutely right, you see? So this is exactly <laughs> where you are, and this is where we are here. Now, let me explain. Okay. Um, I want to learn a little bit more about you. So I want you to think of a color of your choice. What is your favorite colors of all times? Okay, got it. It's what blue. It's blue. Blue color? Yep. Okay, you happy with blue? You want to change your mind or you just was your gut feeling? No, nope, that's it. I'm going with blue. Great, great, great. So if blue is your one, I believe this will be, yeah. So which one of do you think this will be? Uh, the star. The star. So I will put it here. We will look at it later on, but I'm not touching it. Okay. Um, now, you know, if I bring you to your 10-year-old Gloria, to learn mm -hmm. a little bit more about you. Because you know, in companies and teams, it's all about connection, right? Right. Um, if you had to draw a picture for me that you can draw as a 10-year-old Gloria, maybe 10 seconds or less, what would you draw? <laughs> um, actually, somebody who is a little bit overweight too. Um. <laughs> Something that represents you, bring yourself- but I would say- 10-year-old Gloria. A dancer because I, I studied ballet and, and tap as a kid. A dancer. Yeah. I love that. So that tells me a lot about you. And I think that, uh, let me see. Yeah, this will be your next one. So which one of those do you think it will match? Uh, the plus sign. The plus sign. That's yeah. fantastic. And um, now let me ask you another question. 
I know you, I know what your favorite color. I know that, you know, I got it right for the outdoors and, and, and you know, mm-hmm. you need space, you need to get the atmosphere. But if I ask you today to give me one sentence or a word that represent who is Gloria today, because I know you as a 10 year old, I want to know you today. <laughs> For example, I'm very loyal and I'm very creative. Mm-hmm. But what will be your thing that you will say about yourself or your friends will tell you? Um, that I'm, um, I guess kind, I would, I would say. Kind, kind, and and a, and a good listener. And it lines out with what I think, but is that kind? <laughs> okay. So it means that uh, what what will be this? Um, I'm sticking the circle. The circle, and you know yeah. that by default, this yeah. will go here, right? Right. Now yeah. I will give you the choice to change your mind. Do you want to mix any of those to anywhere? Mm. Mm. Nah, we're gonna leave them alone. We'll you go with what it is now? Yep, yep. Okay, no problem. So let's see. <laughs> you don't want to change. Nope, I'm going to trust that they, they turned okay. out right. It's okay, <laughs> it's okay, great. So um, it's up to you. Let's see, you said the circle was one of yep. your last ones. Is a circle. It is a you circle. You said the plus mm-hmm. is the plus. Now I give you a choice. Do you want to change that? This is how certain I am in your process of thinking. <laughs> do you want to change those or you want to keep them? I give you a free choice, but it won't be your free choice because nope. I know what you want to do. No, nope, we're still going to keep them. I'm going to keep You're them. You're still going to keep them. And I think you did the wise choice because that's this <laughs> and that's the square. And I think now you see how we can work together as, as, as people and know each other, even if we're not close. Mm-hmm. But you remember this was the most important thing, which right. is the end, which, which is always here. Yeah. So let me just show you what's inside okay. that was always here inside. All right. Let me just open it here. You said you like a color, right? Yes, I what did. What was your color of choice? Color was blue. Was blue. That's great. Because I chose to put one paper inside <laughs> and look at the color of this paper. It's color blue. Of course. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing is, it's not about the color because color, you know, can be determined. Right. Uh, I see that your 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 book cover is is blue. So That's I right. know that the book cover you put a lot of thought. So I might knew that you like color blue. So I'm just giving you a little bit of my psychological <laughs> reasons. But you said you like you as a child. You were a dancer, right? Yes. Yes. And this is what you would have drawn as a child, mm-hmm. right? Now, it's very interesting that <laughs> we have this drawing here that I drew before we even started this conversation. <laughs> And the Very reason clever. it's working well, you know why, Gloria? Why? Because you are a very kind person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is how it works. You see? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah, very, very wild. You're, uh... So that's just a, a very simple example of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, what yeah. we can do. Uh, in virtual show and obviously when you have 20 people or the most I did was 3,800 people wow. in, a, in a big conference. Oh my goodness. A big company event worldwide. You can see how it, it's fun, you know? Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I, I know we're, we don't have a whole lot of time left here today, but I really would like to ask you one last thing uh, about because it was something that was really intriguing to me is that you and I do have something else in co- in common is the fact that we are both authors. And I know that you wrote a book a few years ago, and I love the name of it. It's called Smile for a Change. And yes. I wanted yeah. to know, oh, oh, and there it is. Yes, it is. It's right there in the right behind you there in your office. I love it. Very good placement. That's very good. <laughs> Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about what, what prompted you to write that book and, and what is it about? Well, first of all, Smile for a Change is basically about how the world's favorite expression can affect our life. Mm. Um, we all take, you know, medication and anxiety and we do, me- you do, we do meditation, we go to doctors, we mm-hmm. do everything, we spend money, but we forget the fundamental 
of the human ability to control your brain. You know, I'm a mm -hmm. hypnotherapist as well. And I right. do a lot of talks about the power of hypnosis for sales and, and personal growth. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that really change our perception is smiling. Now, there's nothing new. We smile all the time or we don't smile at all or we smile right. when we feel like smiling. Mm -hmm. But when you smile, a trigger goes, a neurological trigger goes into your brain and within five seconds or less, you will feel better whether you like it or you don't. <laughs> so even if you close your eyes, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, just smile. Yeah. And you will feel something is changing, the atmosphere, the energy, mm -hmm. something is changing. Yeah. And I come from a country that um, there's a lot of, a lot of issues, a lot of misery over the history of the years. You know, Israel is, you know, has a big history. Yeah. However, people there are always positive, always happy, always in the streets, always enjoying themselves. Mm. And there's something magical about it with, yeah. with so much things going on there, you know, in compared to mm -hmm. other countries. And of course, right. there's other countries as well with the same situation. Mm -hmm. It's very happy. Um, so... I thought from all the books that I will write, and I, and I wrote three books, but I finished one because I felt this is the most urgent for me to share with the world and create a statement. And in this book, it's not only explaining what is a smile, what is the history of smile? Because believe it or not, smile does have a history. How does it evolve around the world? And smile can mean different things in different places around the world. Oh, wow. But also it, it gives you the ability to, um, every chapter talks about a different element in your life that you can use a smile to affect in business, in relationships. Mm -hmm. There is a whole chapter about kids and, mm -hmm. and why kids, uh, you know, it can change their life. There's exercises, there's, there's so many things inside. It's a very easy read, but it gives you all the things that you might know mm -hmm. with some as research and 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 um, and proof inside so it's not something that I make it up and I put it together and I believe this is one of the most important thing that we can have mm -hmm. if you smile you won't only change your perception about you but you will change the perception about everybody around you yeah. and if you smile and I don't care who you are and how you look like you look better when you're smiling even That's if you true. are the most ugliest person in the world <laughs> when you smile yeah. and I'm not talking about you Gloria because you are beautiful oh, but I'm talking in general I know. Uh, there, there is something about it you know you will always want to approach somebody who is smiling and positive energy rather than somebody that is frowning mm -hmm. so this is what the book is all about and I'm very proud of it and uh, I believe that uh, again take what you want leave what you don't mm -hmm. and if you take one thing out of it it will change a big element of your life for the better that's, that's what awesome. I believe well, that is, I, I love it. Now I want, I want to pick it up and read it. I have not had a chance to, to read it yet, but I'm going to get it. And I know it's, uh, I think it's on, it's on uh, Amazon. I, I think people you can get it on it. Amazon. You can get it uh, um, in any other online store. Uh, you can also get it very soon. I think now even I have it, uh, it's already out, I think, uh, as an audio book. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, we have it as an audio book as well for those who would like to hear it. Yeah. And the funny thing is, you know, I, I was thinking who would do my forward for the book. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about many different people. But then I chose Julian Chagran, which is a very old friend of mine. I mean, he is mm -hmm. in his 80s now. God bless yeah. him. He looks younger than me. Um, mm -hmm. But he's a, an amazing British comedian. Mm -hmm. And I work with him in Israel. He lives in Israel. And he okay. did many television shows in the 80s and 90s and 70s. And... I thought that nobody better than a comedian who do slapsticks mm -hmm. who understand it to, to, to write very funny uh, and, and heartfelt uh, um, forward for this book. And if you, you know, in the book, there is his name and resources. So you can look at him, Julian Chagran. He wrote the forward. I was very mm -hmm. honored uh, and very happy that he agreed. And uh, yeah, you can get it in Amazon. You can get it on my website, masterofthemind.com if you want me to personalize it for you. Okay. Um, that's it. Awesome. Well, and, and you just actually stole my last question because is I wanted to find out if someone wants to 
uh, get in touch with you. Maybe maybe there's someone out there who wants to find out about hiring you for their company event. What is the best place for them to get a hold of you? Master, masterofthemind.com. Masterofthemind.com okay. is my website. And it doesn't, you know, I do virtual shows and I do also um, live shows uh, with social distance and everything. And I do hybrid shows, which is events that have live show in them, but also mm -hmm. broadcast outside, yeah. which is a hybrid. Yes. So yes. absolutely. If you have any event, if it's 20 people or 500 or more, <laughs> I'll be happy to talk to you. If, actually, if you go on my website and you go on the virtual, uh, if it is a virtual show, you can book a Zoom meeting with me. If mm -hmm. you have a date and a time, we will meet together and I will walk you through as what will be the best thing for your virtual event, mm -hmm. whether it's a kickoff or like a small, quick show, a 20 minute show, just to engage everybody and then people go to their agenda because it's a short meeting or yeah. maybe an hour uh, of having completely crazy things happening. Yeah, uh, absolutely. There's a lot of crazy things happening in the show, and I promise that everybody to join my show, I'm going to send them on a virtual vacation because everybody <laughs> wants to go on vacation. That's for sure. Well, that sounds also good. Live shows. I'm, I, I start traveling. Now it's slowed down because now, you know, everything started, yeah. but now they start booking again. So I'm available to help. And even if you just have a question, please email me through the website. I'll be happy to assist anybody at any awesome. time. Well, I have really enjoyed this conversation that we have had today and, and, and your demonstration of your expertise as well, which was mind blowing. So I thank you for that. And I really- I that's the first choice. I know. We need to go out and about today. Yes, absolutely, yes. Well, thankfully I do live in Florida, which is lovely. And I love, I love the ocean. It's my favorite place to, to go to. So yeah, awesome. So. Thank you so much for being here and for uh, just being a wonderful you. And I encourage everyone to go check out your website. And, and like I said, and because and, I know you've got some videos on there as well. So especially for those of you who are listening. <laughs> just Google my name and you'll see. Yep, it. that's right. Absolutely. So, so thank you again. And uh, I encourage everyone. What you do is super important. Uh, I think what your book is about is super important. Uh, and maybe next time I need to interview you. Uh, and then about that. <laughs> yeah, but definitely. Thank you that very much. Thank you everybody for watching and keep watching Gloria because she's doing great. Uh, I all think right. <laughs> all of her interviews are fantastic. Thank you so much. And as always, I encourage everyone to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically.